students now let's continue with the part 2 of story a gift of chapels those who have not gone through the previous video i would request you to go through the previous video first and this is part 2 and this is the last part so now let's see in the last video the last part of the story was uh, we did see uh, these three children who are those mridu ravi and meena they heard a creaking sound so mridu was surprised from where this sound came from and they wanted to she wanted to see from where the sound is coming from so they ran towards the house and they peeped from the window so they saw in front of her with most of his back to the window was the bony figure of the music master he had mostly bald head with a fringe of oiled black hair falling around his falling around his ears and an old fashion tuft a gold chain gleamed around his leathery neck and a diamond ring glittering on his hand as it glided up and down the stem of the violin a large foot stuck out from beneath his gold bordered vesti edge and he was beating time on the floor with the scrawny big toe so here when they peep from the window they saw a, a bony figure which means very skinny uh, there was a old man there was a person who was very thin and he was also bald bald means no hair on his head as you can see in the picture and he had very small hair he oiled them nicely and the hair was just falling around his ears and his toes were big toes means the feet the fingers of the feet those were very big they could see it because he was sitting that way and he was wearing a gold chain which was glittering around his leathery neck leathery neck means uh, he is very thin that's why they mentioned leathery neck and he was also wearing a a diamond ring which was glittering when he was pushing the bow string up and down so he was also wearing a vesti edge vesti is that it's a traditional uh costume that white color cloth around him that is called vesti he played a few notes lully stumbled behind him on her violin which looked quite helpless and unhappy in her hands what a difference the music master's notes seemed to float up and settle perfectly in the invisible tracks of the melody it was like the wheels of a train fitting smoothly into the rails and whistling along as ravi said mridu star stared at that huge bearing hand moving effortlessly up the violin stem making the lovely music squack there was lully derailing again so there was so the mridu was staring at this music master he was playing smoothly and it was so melody perfectly on the tracks while in the other hand lully was derailing like a she was playing off track 
and it was not pleasant at all. And Mridu was noticing that music master's hand, it is seen to float, settle perfectly into the invisible tracks and his golden diamond ring was glittering. While in the other hand, Lali was holding the violin awkwardly and creating a irritating, a delay, derailing sound. Now, suddenly, there was a sound from the outside of the gate. It was like that. Amma, oh Amma. Ravi said, listen, there is someone wailing from the gate. Ravi, send that beggar away, cried his mother from the back veranda, where she was chatting with Tapi. He has been coming here every day for the past week, and it's time he found another house to beg from. Patti explained to Tapi. So, from the backyard where Rukmani, the grandmother, and Tapi were chatting, as soon as they heard the beggar, they got fed up and they shouted at Ravi to send the beggar away because he has been coming for the past one week every day continuously. Mrithu and Meena followed Ravi out. The beggar was already in the garden, making himself quite at home. He had spread his upper cloth under the neem tree and was leaning against its trunk, apparently prepared to talk a little snooze, while he waited for the arms to appear. Go away, said Ravi sternly. My party said, My party says it's time for you to found another house to beg from. So Ravi came outside the gate to send the beggar away. Mridu and Meena also followed him. Meanwhile, the beggar he took out his upper cloth and he sat under a neem tree spreading his leg and he was snoozing, means sleeping, trying to sleep maybe because he is tired and it is very hot outside. Ravi came out and said, go away. My party says it's time for you to found another house to beg from. So he told the beggar to get away from their home and to find another house to beg for. Then the beggar said he opened his eyes very wide and gazed at each of the children one by one. The ladies of this house, he said, at last in a voice choked with feeling, or very kind souls. I have kept my body and soul together on their generosity for a whole week. I cannot believe that they would turn me away. So the beggar replied to Ravi that the ladies of this house were very kind souls and they have been giving him food for the past one week. So I cannot believe that they would turn me away today. He raised his voice again, Amma, oh Amma, sad as wail might be, but it certainly wasn't feeble. It began in a deep, strong rumble somewhere in his withered belly and came booming out of his mouth with its few remaining teeth stained brown with beetle chewing. Ravi didn't have to repeat it all to the beggar. What his mother said had been easy for them all to hear 
there under the neem tree. The beggar sat up and sighed. So the beggar did not believe that the mother or the Rukmani could have said that because he trusted these ladies because they have been giving him food for the past one week. So again he shouted a deep voice though he was tired but his voice was very strong because he is very hungry. That has produced that voice. Deep, strong, rumble voice. Hinness, somewhere hinness, withered belly. Withered means dry because he has not eaten food for a long time and his belly, his stomach has been contracted. And with that remaining teeth stained brown because he was chewing the beetle. Beetle means the pan. So Ravi didn't have to repeat what his mother said because his mother was shouting to send him away and the beggar can easily hear it because he was just sitting outside the home under the neem tree. In written, Ravi's mother was shouting from inside. Ravi, tell him there is nothing left in the kitchen called Rukumani and he is not to come again. Tell him that. She sounded fed up. So the Ruk Rukmani was fed up and she was shouting and to tell the beggar to move away from there and there is nothing left in the kitchen and he should not come here again. And she sounded fed up because this beggar has been coming every day and disturbing Rukmani. Ravi didn't have to repeat it all to the beggar. What his mother said had been easy for them all to hear. There under the neem tree, the beggar sat up and sighed. So, whatever Ravi's mother said was audible to though the beggar was able to hear because he is not very far from the house and Rukmani was shouting enough. So the beggar replied, I will go, I will go, he said, wearily. Only let me have some rest here under this tree. The sun is so hot. The terrace melted on the road. My feet are already blistered. So the beggar said, I will go, but it is very hot outside and the tar, tar means the road, the, you might have noticed, the black color, the, the tar is called the road, the black color thing which is on the road, it is melting. So he wanted to take some rest because he had so many blisters. On his feet. Blistered means the uh, wound because of the hot weather, boils and burns. He stretched out his feet to show large pink peeling blisters on the soles of his bare feet. So he stretched out his feet to show that large pink peeling blisters on the soles of his bare feet. As you can see in the picture. picture the feet, his, his soles are full of blisters, boils and burns. I suppose he doesn't have the money to buy chapels. Mridu whispered to Meena, Ravi, have you got an old pair of chapels in the house somewhere? So, Mridu said, maybe this poor beggar doesn't have money to buy chapels. And he and she whispered, it's been speaking quietly in the ears of Ravi and Meena, asking if there is any old pair of chapels in their house. I don't know, said Ravi. Mine are too small to fit his feet, or I would have given them to him. So Ravi said, I don't know, uh, but. The, my feet are too small to fit. Otherwise, I would have given. 
Ravi said, his feet is too small and his chapels would not fit the beggar. And even Ridhu's and Meena's feet were smaller compared to the beggar's feet. So they were helpless. So the beggar was shaking out his upper cloth and tightening his dhoti. He raised his eyes and looked fearfully at the road, gleaming in the afternoon heat. He needs something on his feet. So the beggar slowly got up, tightened his dhoti, and he raised his eyes, looked fearfully at the road. Why? Because he doesn't have chapels and he was worried how to walk on the melting tar road without chapels. Eat something on his feet. Meena said, her big eyes filling. It's not fair. Shh, said Ravi. I'm thinking about it. Blubbering, it's not fair. It's not fair. Isn't going to help. In two minutes, he will be frying his feet on that road. So these children were not convinced to send the beggar this way in the hot weather condition. They really wanted to help the beggar. So they were thinking of some plan. What he needs is a pair of chapels. So where do we get them? Come, let's search the house. He pushed Mridu and Meena into the house. So they said all he wanted is a pair of chapels. Let's get inside the house and search for some old pair of chapels. That's what they have decided. Just as she stepped into the veranda, Mridu's eyes fell on the old looking chapels. She had noticed when she arrived. Ravi, she whispered to him, Whose are those? Ravi turned and glanced at the shabby looking but sturdy old slippers. He beamed and nodded. So, she pointed out those old chapels which she noticed when she arrived. And she pointed the chapels and asked Ravi, Whose are those? Ravi looked at a glance and was shaking, that means nodding his head. Ravi and Meena thought this would be the perfect size of chapels for the beggar and they slowly took the chapels. These are just the right size, said Ravi. He picking them, Mridu and Meena followed him nervously back into the garden. Say they quite nervous to steal the chapel because it's not them. Let's see whose chapels was those. So they went nervously taking the chapel towards the back into the garden. Here, said Ravi to the beggar, dropping the slippers in front of the old man. Wear these and don't come back. The beggar start, stared at the slippers, hurriedly flung his towel over his shoulder. Say so he dropped the chapel in front of the beggar and said, Wear this and don't come back here. The beggar stared at the chapels and he flung, flung means float or uh, hang this towel over his shoulder look staring at the chapels. He pushed his feet into them and left. After wearing those chapels, muttering and blessing to the children, he blessed the children very quietly. In a minute he had vanished around the corner of the street. In a minute he vanished. He disappeared from around the corner of the street. 
The music master came out of the house and took an unappreciative look at the three of them, sitting quietly under the tree, playing marbles. Then he searched for his chapels in the veranda, where he had put them. So the music master, after his class, he came out of the house and looked those three children playing marbles under the tree. And he was searching for his chapel in the veranda, where he had left them. Finally, he called after a few moments. She hurried up to him. Have you seen my chapels, my dear? I remember having kept them here. Let's search every corner of the veranda. So he was searching for a slipper in the veranda. He could not find it. And he called Lully and asked Lully about the chapels. And she started searching at the every corner of the veranda. He started looking around over the railing and crouching near the flower pots to look between them. Brand new they were. I went all the way to Mount Road to buy them. They cost a whole month's fees, do you know? So he was searching every corner of the house near the flower pot, veranda and everywhere. But he could not find them. And he was so upset and he said those were brand new and he went all the way to Mount Road. Mount Road is a place in Chennai where you get uh, good shopping. So that is what he mentioned here. He went to Mount Road, Mount Road to buy them and they were very costly. It cost a whole month fee, he said. Meanwhile, went to tell her mother. Rukumani appeared looking harassed with party and following her. Where could they be? It's a really quite upsetting to think someone might have stolen them. So Lali informed her mother and Rukmani was quite upset and she was also upset searching for the chapels and she was upset that someone would have stolen it. And Party, she said, there's so many vendors come to the door. Worried Party. So there's so many vendors coming every day to sell something. So Party thought they might have stolen it and she was worried. Rukmani caught sight of Ravi, Mridu and Meena sitting under the tree. Have you children? She began and then saying they were curiously quiet went on more slowly so have you seen anyone looking around the veranda a sharp v-shaped line had formed between her eyebrows another straight tighter one appeared in the place of her usually soft pleasant mouth rukmani was angry thought bridu with a shiver so rukmani went outside had a look at those children playing under the tree. She asked, children, have, have you seen those slippers? Did anyone took it from the veranda? And she had a V-shaped line. You can see in the picture her, her eyebrows and on her forehead, there were so many V-shaped lines. So why this has been said here? Because to, sh uh, to show how upset and also, she had a doubt on these children. So Mridu thought with a shiver, she wouldn't be so upset if she knew about the poor beggar with sores on his feet. She tried to tell herself. Mridu, she was worried and she was uh, talking, she was upset and she was thinking that if the aunt, her aunt Rukmani, would come to know about the poor beggar with the wounds on his feet. She would not say anything and she decided to tell this to her aunt. She said, Rukmani, there was a beggar here 
poor thing he had such boils on his feet then rukmani replied so you gave the music master's chapels to that old beggar who turns up here when party heard this she said children these days groaned party amma didn't you tell me about karna who gave away everything he had even his gold earrings he was so kind and generous so ravi said to his amma once you told the story about karna who gave everything he had even the gold earrings rukmani stab snapped silly karna didn't give away other people's things he only gave away his own so she was upset and she said how silly karna gave his own things not other things to anyone rushed brashly on and amma if they did fit would you really not have minded so he said like if i would have not given i mean when rukmani said but my chapels wouldn't have fitted the beggar's feet this is what ravi said because he was small the beggar's feet was larger and that is why he gave the music master chapels and he did not give his own so ravi said amma if they did fit would you really not have minded he said to his mother if my chapels would have fit him and i gave that to the beggar she would have really not minded rukmani she got even angry now and shouted at ravi go inside right now this minute so rukmani was angry and she said shouted at ravi how dare you speak to me like this just get inside right now this minute and she hurried indoors and brought out gopu mama's hardly worn new chapels she brought gopu mama's new chapels and she came out these should fit you sir please put these on i am so sorry my son has been very naughty she hurried indoors and brought out gopu mama's hardly worn new chapels and gave it to the music master she said i'm sorry my son is very naughty so she gave those new chapels to the music master and said this would fit you nicely well i suppose this will have to do the music master's eyes lit up he put the new chapels on trying not to look too happy he said well i suppose this will have to do the music master's eyes were lit up he was so happy from inside but he did not show that that he is too happy and he just said okay yes this will fit so after wearing those chapels the music master said these days children have no respect for elders what to do a hanuman incarnate only rama can save such a naughty fellow he said these days children are very naughty and have no respect for the elders and he said only rama could save these naughty fellows so he said a hanuman incarnate that means he compared this children ravi to we a monkey has been called a monkey he was a holy monkey so rukmani was not happy with that and she was upset he came in and have some tiffin honestly how do you children think of such things then rukmani told mridu to come inside and have some tiffin and she was saying very upset how do you children think of such things rukmani eyes flash she didn't seem to like ravi being called a monkey even a holy monkey she stood stiff and straight 
by the front door. It was clear she wanted she wanted the music master to leave quickly, and she said, "Thank God, to Gopu Mama, he doesn't wear his chapels to work." As she walked towards the kitchen with Mridu and Meena, she suddenly began to laugh. So she was not liking the idea that music master called Ravi a monkey or even a holy monkey and she wanted the music master to leave the home soon and uh, she said thank god gopu mama didn't wear the chapels to work today and she asked the children to come and have some food while walking towards the kitchen mridu and meena she suddenly began to laugh so children this is the end of the story so you might have learned so many things from the story you also heard about the history of pallavas and an historical place called mahabalipuram and you also learned how to be kind and also not to steal others stuffs but here rukmini said to the children not to give other things steal other things but at the last what she herself did to save the children from that situation she gave gopu mama's chapels to the music master this is like same as the children did what they did to save the beggar they gave music master's chapel and to save the children rukmani gave gopu mama's chapels but what i understood what i hope you enjoyed the story and uh, the moral of the story is to be kind and not to steal things and you definitely learn the history of pallavas so if you have any doubts you can message me or call me and i hope you enjoyed the story and uh, it would be nice if you read the story line by line and try to understand this better thank you see you in the next english class